Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and autoimmune diseases, skin diseases of all kinds, rosacea, eczema, acne, psoriasis, digestive ailments, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if, you may have, if you've heard something or read something that you'd like clarification on, if you have questions about our true skin health products or skin health in general, we are here for you on the bright side. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear recommended on the program, please head over to my websites, brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com. You can order products directly off the site. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. And, of course, if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, Head over to truthtreatments.com, check out our blog as well as the products, Truth Retinol Gel, Truth Balm, Truth Serum, and Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream. They're all up at truthtreatments.com. They represent the culmination of my 32 years of being in the skincare business as a pharmacist, as a formulator, as a researcher, as an academician, and as a therapist. You're getting the condensation of everything that I think is important about topical skincare with our Truth Skin Health products. Check them out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side once again. We're talking steroid hormones, fatty hormones, as opposed to peptide hormones. Those are the two major classes of hormones in the body, fatty hormones and watery hormones. Everything in the body is either fatty or watery, or all the chemicals in the body are fatty or watery, or some degree of both. Things like lecithin, for example, are both fatty and watery. Steroid hormones are your fatty hormones. And we've been talking the last few weeks about the steroid hormones in regards to the high-fat way of eating called the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is a high-fat diet. It's also a low-carb diet. And they'll tell you it's a moderate protein diet. I'm not sure exactly what that means. But most especially, the ketogenic diet is high-fat and low-carb. Basically, you want to enjoy lots of eggs and and, uh, coconut oil and dairy and cheese and butter, making sure it's hormone-free and antibiotic, of course. Cold-pressed, fresh nutritional oils, oils that are kept in the refrigerator and used quickly, not heated. Organ meats, fish, these are all good ketogenic foods, uh, especially organ meats and fish are both high protein, or good sources of protein, and also uh, high sources of fat, of good fat. You want to restrict your carb intake to vegetables and maybe, maybe small amounts of fruits, although they're not tremendously necessary. Vegetables are necessary, but fruits aren't. Not only will you find yourself losing weight when you do the ketogenic diet, but you'll also be improving athletic performance. You'll be building more muscle. And, and as far as athletic performance goes, I don't want you to think you know, like you're an athlete necessarily. Athletic performance can be just having more flexibility. It can mean just having more resilience or more resistance to the body breaking down. You'll be building more muscle. You'll be improving heart health. You'll be improving brain health. All of this is with the ketogenic diet. And, of course, as we spoke yesterday, the ketogenic diet can also be helpful for menopausal symptoms and perimenopausal symptoms. 
you know, we have we medicalize everything in this country. The medical model has a way of usurping everything that involves our lifestyle and our lives, including menopause. Menopause is not a sickness. Menopause is not a disease. Menopause is not a medical issue. It shouldn't be a medical issue. Unless you got something wrong with an organ or a structure in the body, menopause is basically just aging. It's part of the age. It's a marker of aging. And aging can be slowed down, but not medically. The best way to deal with the onset of menopausal symptoms or to slow down the onset of menopausal symptoms is to slow things down, reduce inflammation, eliminate anything that activates the immune system. And this is where food comes in, and this is where the keto ketogenic diet can play an important role for folks who are dealing with menopause or with perimenopause. If you are approaching that time and you're starting to notice that perimenopausal symptoms are kicking in, you're maybe missing periods or they're irregular, or maybe you're starting to get a little anxiety or insomnia, you want to at least think about exploiting or leveraging the power of the ketogenic diet, the calming diet. The ketogenic diet is a high fat diet and our body is designed to burn fat. We're fat burners, although or I should say we should be fat burners. But because we're eating so much sugar, sugar becomes our primary fuel. Sugar should be an emergency fuel. That's where sugar excels, is for giving us quick energy to run from a tiger. For the most part, we want to be running on fat. We want to be burning fat. The problem for most of us is because of the standard American diet, we've, be, we've been convinced we need to eat high sugar foods, particularly grains and flour. And of course, because sugar has an addicting quality, because sugar activates happy hormones in the brain, happy brain chemicals, we become hooked on sugar and we eat lots of sugar. And then we end up being sugar burners. Sugar is incredibly inflammatory. Sugar will uh, trigger the onset of menopausal symptoms faster than any, any other dietary, any other, uh, dietary comp uh, component of our diet, any other food, any other food component. You wanna turn on your menopausal symptoms, eat lots of sugar. You want to accelerate the onset of menopause, eat lots of sugar, which is why so many of us are dealing, or so many women are dealing with these kinds of things, these kinds of symptoms, hot flashes, jitteriness, anxiety, insomnia, and men go through their own version of menopause too, by the way, it's called andropause, and everything we talk about with the ketogenic diet, how it's important for helping with menopausal symptoms or preventing them, slowing down their onset, goes for men too. There's a very important relationship between testosterone and the ketogenic diets we talked about before. Ketogenic diet is a building, a, a building diet. It will reduce inflammation. It will reduce insulin or, or make insulin more potent. All of these will have a beneficial effect on testosterone too. So if you're dealing, if you're a guy dealing with andropause symptoms, as we talked about yesterday, I can call them andropausal symptoms, but that's what they are, you're going to benefit from the ketogenic diet too. This whole thing about insulin is so important to understand. The ketogenic diet works in large part because it deactivates or at least slows down the production of insulin, makes the body more sensitive to insulin. Ketogenic diet, because of this whole insulin connection, can reduce the signs of metabolic syndrome, heart health issues, liver disease, Alzheimer's disease, even cancer. Sugar burning leads to cancer. Sugar burning leads to Alzheimer's disease. The more sugar we're burning, the more likely we are to have all of these degenerative health issues. You want to do one thing, just one thing, reduce your calories and reduce your sugar. Running our bodies on sugar leads us to this high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster, and that causes a sense of a state of chronic emergency. That will cause the, the secretion of cortisol. This is where we get off on the, this is where the disease, the disease process begins. This is where we enter the disease sweepstakes. And none of this has anything to do with your doctor. None of it. Zippo. It's all about lifestyle. Hot flashes, insomnia, anxiety, hypertension, these are all manifestations of a jacked up emergency nervous system, a sympathetic nervous system. If you wanted to put a list together of all of the symptoms that are associated with a hyped up sympathetic nervous system, your stress nervous system, it would read like a checklist of menopausal symptoms. They're the same thing. They're identical. Menopausal symptoms are represent activation of the emergency nervous system, which tells you that anything you could do to calm the body down, to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, the relaxation nervous system, is going to help you improve your menopausal symptoms and andropausal symptoms too. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this.
Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for being here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com. Also, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com are websites where you can uh, purchase longevity products and sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team. We blog on both of those, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. Thank you to John T. Collier and Robert Lundgren for setting those up. And if you want to talk to a real live flesh and blood longevity representative, you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. They can answer all your questions. And of course, you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can help me and my mission to educate the world about how important and powerful a good nutritional supplement program can be. You can also make some money selling longevity products and help, help spread the word about good nutrition and good nutritional supplementation. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. We got lines open for you. We'll get to your calls here in our next segment, 844-236-6010. We're talking about menopause and andropause and the ketogenic diet, skin health and hormones. And Menopause and andropause are signs of aging is the bottom line here. And that means that we have some control. We have control over slowing down the aging process. It's not a doctor issue. There are no drugs that can slow down the aging process. Every single last one of them will speed up the aging process, but there's no drugs that can slow it down. And if you understand that menopause and andropause are really markers of aging, you can see why it's none of the doctor's business, really. And if we do end up using hormone replacement therapy, there's a good chance that we're gonna run into problems. If you're a woman or a man, Dealing with, uh, with hormone, uh, considering hormone replacement therapy, which typically involves estrogen if you're a woman and testosterone if you're a man, there's other options that you, in my opinion, there's other options that you want to consider first. First of all, if you're strong and you're healthy, then men, uh, using hormone replacement therapy is not as problematic. What really runs, where we really run into a problem with hormone replacement therapy is when we're sick or sickly or our bodies are breaking down and our doctor then gives us hormones. That does nothing but jack up the system, a sick system, a fragile system. On the other hand, if you work on the breakdown, if you work on your liver and your digestive system, if you work on the parts of the body that are breaking down, your blood sugar system, you may not even need the hormone replacement therapy. And then if you do the hormone replacement therapy, you're going to get much, more, much better results. It'll be much more effective. HRT is much more effective if you're already healthy. Of course, if you're already healthy, the question is, why would you do HRT? But nonetheless, HRT is a problem, hormone replacement therapy, is a problem if our bodies are sick and then we get the hormones especially if we have a digestive problem because HRT, hormone replacement therapy, particularly estrogen, is dependent on effective clearance from, uh, of, of the hormones from the digestive tract. HRT's benefits depend on how we process estrogen at the digestive system level. If you're dealing with dysbiosis, you're not going to process estrogen correctly. If you're in dysbiosis, meaning messed up gut bacteria, if you have a problem with your gut bacteria, if you have a problem with the liver, if you have a problem with the gallbladder, or if you, God forbid, don't have a gallbladder, if you have problems with, the, uh, uh, with stomach acid, if you have Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or irritable bowel syndrome, all of these are going to make it much more difficult for your body to process estrogen. If you're sick and your cells are sick, you're not going to be able to use the estrogen. See, this is, all of this is points to the fact that you want to be healthy and strong first before you get your hormone replacement therapy. The only people who should ever do HRT, in my opinion, are folks who are, other than hormone depletion, are strong and are healthy. And the cells themselves, remember, all diseases sell disease. Hormones don't work by themselves. They work because they affect cells, but that means the cells got to be able to accept the hormone. That means the cell has to be healthy. All of this is to say, get on a nutritional supplement program, take care of the diet, stabilize the blood sugar, reduce your cortisol. These are all the things we talk about every day. You know, you guys, you're going to get sick of hearing me say this, but it's the same thing over and over and over again. Work on the digestive system, stabilize the blood sugar, stabilize or reduce cortisol secretion, make sure you're relaxing the body. Don't eat so much sweets. Exercise a little bit. These are all the same things that we have to do 
if we want to stay healthy. Because at the end of the day, menopausal symptoms and andropausal symptoms are signs of an accelerated aging or signs of aging. HRT, for the most part, isn't going to involve nutrition and dietary strategies, and it rarely will uh, involve digestive support or liver health. This is why so many folks don't benefit from HRT, and this is why hormone replacement therapy, by the way, has been associated with toxicity, autoimmune diseases, blood clots, even cancer. According to the Women's Health Initiative, which was a a, a a 15-year study that followed 160,000 plus postmenopausal women, women who took combination therapy, estrogen and progestin, had increased risks of heart disease. On the other hand, the ketogenic diet may be helpful in reducing all of the symptoms of, of menopause, every last one of them, as particularly the brain ones. Anxiety, jitteriness, irritability, sleep disturbances, not to mention cardiovascular health issues. The ketogenic diet is important for all these systems, and all of these systems are also where we end up with, uh, with uh, problems in menopause. And then calming hormones as well, progesterone. In my opinion, progesterone should be the first hormone replacement therapy uh, hormone to consider. It should be the first prescription you get. If you're going to do hormone replacement therapy, try progesterone first. It's much more mild than estrogen. It's got calming benefits. It's important for the brain. The, brain, uh, the body concentrates it in the brain. It can help with migraine headaches. It can help with the emotional ups and downs of menopause and andropause. It can be beneficial for folks dealing with seizure disorders, as we said yesterday, bone health, libido. It can help, building, uh, help improve building a muscle. It's like a second type of testosterone. It has a lot of similarities to testosterone. It can improve sleep. And because sleep and testosterone are connected, for guys dealing with andropause, make sure you're getting enough rest. The more quality of, sleep, quality of your sleep, the more testosterone you're going to make. Of course, if you're subsisting on the standard American diet, which is 60% or 70% processed food and sugar, that's not going to happen. As we get older, we start to make more cortisol anyway, more stress hormone anyway, just from being alive, which is such a stressful thing for most of us. But if you throw in the standard American diet, which is a cortisol diet, basically, a high cortisol diet, now you're going to be dealing with more breakdown, more uh, uh, slowdown in muscle growth, uh, problems with bone building and repair. All of this is from sleep, lack of sleep. Lack of sleep decreases our ability to build, decreases our testosterone, the downward spiral of aging and frailty and ultimately of disease can then show up. All of this can be broken by getting enough sleep, by using progesterone, by eating less food, by intermittent fasting, by strength training, flexibility training, and of course the modified ketogenic diet. High carb or a high fat, low carb, and moderate protein. Progesterone is extremely important for the brain, for mental health. It's concentrated in the brain up to 20 times from the blood. It can help with brain injury, brain uh, speed the healing of brain tissue after it's injured. It's an anti-anxiety hormone. It's a natural Prozac. Progesterone is a natural Prozac. It works with serotonin in the brain. It helps improve uh, our ability to deal with the ups and downs of life, of day-to-day -day life, which is what serotonin does. All right, so much more to talk about. We'll take your phone calls when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, 6010, 844-236-6010. We'll be back after this. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for being here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com. 866, or I'm sorry, 844-236-6010 is our number on the Bright Side. And uh, we'll get your calls here in just a second, so hang on. This is from the journal... Uh, this is from the annual conference of the British Psychological Society. Guess what? Bored people reach for potato chips. That's the conclusion of a study of, uh, let's see, 52 participants from, uh, from England. No reason to think it's not the same here. Why? Because fatty and sugary foods hype up the brain, make the brain happy. Dopamine, our reward center, is activated by fatty and sugary foods. So what do you do? Well, you eat good fats and you eat good sugar. That's where vegetables come in, releasing, uh, you can release the sugars from veggies by braising them, by heating them, by steaming them somehow, and then use lots of yummy butter and coconut oil, and don't forget your salt. So when you want to, if you're bored and you want to hype up your brain a little bit and get that dopamine going, use Brussels sprouts or broccoli and butter and lots of salt. 
This one here from the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease, almost half of Alzheimer's cases are due to insulin, hyperinsulin, I should say. This is the blood sugar connection, once again demonstrating that if you want to do one thing to stay healthy, to keep your brain healthy, to reduce or slow down the aging process and the symptoms of accelerated aging, including dementia, including cognitive difficulties, reduce your intake of the sugars, eat more veggies, go ketogenic, eat more protein, particularly branched chain amino acid rich protein like whey protein and egg protein and animal protein, excuse me and sorry to my vegetarian friends. If you're a vegetarian and you want to up your intake of branched chain amino acids for improving satisfaction and reducing sugar intake, use beans and uh, soy particularly and also mushrooms which are a source of some of these branch chain amino acids. Mushrooms are really interesting when it comes to protein foods. Mushrooms are like a cross between an animal food and a vegetable food. So you get a lot of the benefits of animal foods by eating mushrooms, including, by the way, vitamin D. So uh, vegetarians might want to consider using mushrooms or eating lots of mushrooms, enjoying mushrooms. If you're a vegetarian, you got to be very, very careful with what you eat and your nutritional intake. Not that it can't be done. 844-236-6010 is our number. Carl, the Truth Raider, what's going on, man? Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning, Ben. Hey, is it the truth that you named your truth treatment products after the Truth Raider himself? <laughs> no, that's not true, but I would have if I knew you then. <laughs> I probably would have. Yeah, I think you were pulling my leg about that. Uh, oh, did I tell you that? First coming oh. up with it. <laughs> I said, don't. Oh, I told you that? Uh-oh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I think I might have been pulling your leg. Well, after it's... all these years, it sounds consistent with... Uh, okay, you know what? I will honorarily name it after you, truth <laughs> Thanks, Ben. What's okay, going on? This, uh, this difficulty I'm having in my left tonsil, I've discovered oh, yes, yes. inside the back in the adenoid in the lower part in, in there in the pocket, there is a white... A uh, little spot of pus back in there. That's not good. Here's the deal. Your lymph, your tonsils are part of your lymph. Your lymph is your waste contr waste management system, waste elimination system. It's the sewage pipes of the body. Right. Interestingly, in addition to being the sewage pipes, it also transports nutrition. So when the lymph gets clogged up, not only are you going to be running r risk for increased problems with your immune system because you're not going to be able to clear poisons out as effectively, you're also going to run nutritionally deficient, particularly in fatty vitamins, which are important for the immune system. So it's really important that you move the lymph around. Two things to do if you're dealing with tonsils issues or any kind of lymphatic congestion, lymphedema, any kind of lymph issues, and most of us are as we age, move your body. Get on a rebounder. Hang upside down on an inversion device. Take walks. Get on a treadmill. Run. Exercise. Breathe deeply. Breathing pushes lymphatic, uh, lymphatic fluid. So deep breathing. Anything you could do to move the body, including deep breathing, moving the muscles in and out. is uh, Anything you do to move the muscles, I should say, is very important for helping circulate, improve circulation of lymph. The second thing is controlling any toxins that get into the system. Lymph, the lymph becomes congested primarily from digestion digestive toxins, no surprise there. There's a big opening from the intestine right into the lymph. And so when we eat foods that are causing immune, act immune activity at the intestinal level, things like gluten or, or uh, other, other plant defense molecules, lectins, L-E-C-T-I-N-S, uh, or homogenized milk, any kind of small fat particles, these all get dumped into the lymph and they can improve, they can uh, uh, exacerbate lymphatic congestion. So in addition to moving the lymph, you've got to stop the toxicity from getting into the lymph. I'd be fasting if I were you, Carl, and I'd also be using the... Uh, the Swero V Cleanse, and I'd be very, very vigilant, extremely vigilant to any foods that cause digestive distress and, of course, eliminating them. This should be, this is exactly the same stuff that, that we talk about every single day here on the Bright Side. And, in fact, one of the main reasons why our bodies break down, one of the main reasons why we get cancer and why we get heart disease and why we get autoimmune disease is because of the lymph, because the lymph is clogged up. So all the strategies that we talk about here from, from the ketogenic diet to reducing food intake and intermittent fasting, all of these are lymphatic cleansing strategies. So go back to the uh, archives. I know you've been listening a lot, so you know what I, you know all the things to do, Carl, the Truth Raider, but I'm glad you brought it up anyway. I appreciate it. I'm going to motivate here, Carl. Anything else you want to add? No, it first started out with a piece of food I think that was stuck. It's, it's not a piece of food that's stuck. No, it's not a piece of food that's stuck. That doesn't happen. The food, okay. is, doesn't, food doesn't get stuck in the lymph, but particles can activate an immune response, which then can create clogging. That can happen. Okay. And again, that is, that's all the digestive strategies. Don't forget the probiotics and the fermented food. They're very important for the lymph as well. Okay, Carl, have a great day, man. Talk Thanks. to you later, buddy. Okay, bye-bye. 
All right, let's see. Uh, Dave in Connecticut. What's going on, man? Welcome to the Bright Side. How you doing, Ben? Hey, um, good morning. Two quick questions. I'll, I'll yes. go really quickly here. Um, one is about an additive that's inside a lot of the longevity products that I'm just, okay. some people are just asking me questions about. Sure, what is, is it? Maltodextrin. Okay. And then the other question is about the ketogenic diet. Um, they say that you cannot reach ketosis unless you're under five grams of carbs per day. I don't know about that. Where did you hear that? Uh, that's not doctor, true. Some that's absolutely not true. Like the I, ketogenic guy. I was just reading That's that. not true. The ketog- ketosis occurs on a continuum. Now, you do need to reach a, he's right about a threshold. There's like a certain point where you have to be at in order to, for it to kick in. But five grams doesn't really mean anything because it depends on, on what you're, uh, on, on how much uh, the other foods you're eating. Depends on the amount of fiber that you're getting, for example. It depends on other things. So you don't want to necessarily go by the, the flat amount. And, and everybody's going to be different anyway. I mean, I'm surprised he would, is he an MD? Uh, he is. He is actually. Yeah. Well, that sounds like something an MD would say. Not everybody's the same. You can't just say five grams for everybody. It also depends on the other foods you're eating, the amount of fats that you're eating. And uh, ketosis occurs on a continuum. So okay. some people are getting more or less. I'm not buying that. As far as maltodextrin goes, maltodextrin is a type of carbohydrate, basically. It is, uh, it, it's derived from various vegetables. It is used in, food, in a powders, mostly, as a thickener. So it creates body. One of the reasons why we like uh, uh, drinks is because of the texture of the drink, or don't like drinks is because of the texture of the drink. It turns out that by thickening a drink just slightly, it becomes more palatable, and that's the purpose of the maltodextrin. Maltodextrin uh, is easily digestible, and it is absorbed as sugar. It doesn't really have a sweet, it doesn't really have a flavor, very much of a flavor. But there's such a tiny amount, it's really not going to affect your blood sugar at all. Uh, it's basically inert, it's, and it's used in there to improve the way, they call it mouthfeel, the way a, 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 a liquid drink tastes and uh, feels on the mouth, make it more palatable. But it's not, it's really basically inert. Do you, uh, why don't you hang on, Dave? We'll take a break, and we'll let you finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist okay. Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Dave in Connecticut. David, you there? Yes, sir. Okay, so maltodextrin is nothing more than a, a, a starch. It's a long chain of sugars, of glucose, just glucose, 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 just strung together. Uh, it has a small amount of calories, like, but it's not. It's negligible in the amounts that are in the um, in the products. It's basically used as a thickener in those products. It doesn't have much of a flavor or much sweetener. And when I say thickener, I don't mean a heavy thickener, but just to give liquids a slight amount of body, or as they say in the food business, mouth feel to make them more palatable. It's really. Ne- it's really doesn't do much at all except for that. Does that There's answer no your question? Toxic, toxic There's no tox. Toxic. No zero. It's glucose. I mean, it's just oh. glucose. It's just a, a long chain of glucose molecules. Gotcha. Did you hear it was toxic from anybody? Well, yeah. Somebody said that they read an article and, and that they said it's really bad for the body and this and that. Just, and I read just, the article. Tri- just go to chemistry. It's glucose. As, as bad for you as glucose, except it's strung together, so it's not straight sugar, although your body can break it. There's a type of, um, of uh, maltodextrin called resistant maltodextrin that just acts like a fiber that doesn't even, doesn't even get used by the body. But most maltodextrin is broken up into glucose, and you get small amounts of it, but it's negligible because there's like a speck of it in most products. Good. In most longevity news. products, I should say. Okay, good deal. Thanks, Dave. All right, man. Thank Take you. care. Okay, let's go to do, do, do. let's go to Brenda in Texas. Welcome to the bright side, Brenda. Hi, thanks hey. for taking my call. Sure, what's going on? Um, I was just wanting to talk some more about the uh, the estrogen and the okay. progesterone and all that. I've listened a couple of days, and um, I wondered if you had heard of the Bio T natural pellets. Bio T is that uh-huh. what you said? B I O T B I O T E B I O T E natural natural pellets. Uh-huh. Now I the T would I would assume is the testosterone. Uh-huh. It's, you get it from you get it from a doctor, right? Um, yes. And okay. So. Like I get them there in Colorado from a doctor. There. Where in Colorado do you go? Well, in either Colorado Springs or there in Denver. Oh, nice! I'm from well, Texas and do that. <laughs> they don't have anything in color in Texas. Well, they they do. Um, 
Well, it first started in Houston and Dallas area and all that. They've had them there for several years, but we're up in Amarillo, so. Uh, okay. I'm hearing now that there is four or five here in town that have them, but when I started it two years ago, I, I knew this doctor already in, in Colorado Springs, and, and my daughter lives up there. So, matter of fact, we come through Boulder and stuff. They're four oh, times nice. Here. <laughs> oh, so, nice. Nice. Um, Do you like they, it? Uh, yes. Uh-huh. And these are, he makes a little slit in your hip. Yeah, they put and, little pellets in you. Uh-huh, and puts these, in, and he gets them from a, 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 a pharmacy or whatever, I think, in Las Vegas. That's one of the ones that makes, it's like 99% pure ingredient that's supposed to be closest to what our body makes. Okay, well, BioT, as I've, I, I, I'm not 100% sure you may know more about it than I do, actually. I think it's testosterone, just male hormone, to, and not just for men, but for women, too. Are you using it or yes, by any chance? Uh -huh, and, is, and it for, is, it, is it just testosterone? Is it what? Is it just the hormone testosterone, or do you no, know? No, it's estrogen. And, it's estrogen. Okay, uh -huh. well. Like, he, I, give, he does all the blood work, and we see you okay. know, your levels and all, and... And start there, and, and then he gives you some estrogen for the women, and then, um, okay, then the well, last couple of times he's given me a little bit of testosterone also to help carry it on through. Okay, well, BioT, you know, the way it sounds, it's testosterone. I don't, I can't, I'll have to look into it because I haven't heard of that brand. Here's the deal, though, with hormone replacement therapy, as I was saying earlier in the program. Mm -hmm. If you're healthy... Your digestive system is healthy. You don't have any bowel problems or gallbladder problems or, or liver problems. If you're already strong and you want to bump up your hormones as you go into the aging, as you go through the aging process through menopause or andropause, if you're a man, a little hormone replacement therapy may help you. Make sure, you're, make sure that you're using other nutritional supplements, though, because you need those to help process those hormones. And if you're not healthy, that's where it becomes a problem. If you're trying to get healthy by using hormone replacement therapy, not only is that not going to work, but it's going to backfire on you. Do you follow me, ma'am? If you're trying to get healthy by being on hormone replacement therapy, it could very well backfire on you, and it's not going to help you anyway because health is not a hormonal issue prime, first and foremost. It is eventually, but first and foremost, it's a nutritional issue. You follow me with this? Now, if you're, if you're healthy, that's different. Then a little bit of hormone replacement therapy may bump up your, may improve your health a little bit. But you got to be healthy first. And so what I'd be doing is I'd be taking care of, if it was me, I'd be taking care of my health first. And then if I needed a little bump up with uh, some testosterone or estrogen, whatever the case may be, then do the hormone replacement therapy. Again, making sure that your digestive system is operating on all cylinders, firing on all cylinders, your liver is working correctly you got your gallbladder you're using digestive enzymes and bile salts and probiotics and eating fermented foods and uh, eating less calories and reducing your sugar all the things we talk about on the, on this program whether or not you're using HRT but especially if you are or if your body is breaking down already I would be doing all of these strategies first before I went into HRT well and we've been doing longevity now for about 10 months so okay. products and of course I do like they have celiac disease so I've been you know this is where it becomes a this is where it becomes a problem ma'am uh, if you have celiac disease you're a candidate for toxicity from the hormones do you understand what i'm saying mm. if you have celiac disease you are a prime candidate for getting toxicity and reactions from the hormones that's where you're going to run into a problem because the intestine is responsible for detoxifying that estrogen and now you've bumped it up now you've given your intestine more work to do You've given the bacteria more work to do in the intestine, and you're already compromised. This is where you really want to be careful, in my humble opinion. Okay, Brenda? Okay, and so what else, what should I do? Are you on a probiotic supplement? Are you using probiotics? Yes, uh-huh. Okay. Yes. Are you eating, eating fermented food? Well, we just, uh, hearing you talk about that, like the, um, oh, sauerkraut we've got that but when you say eat it like should we just how should we eat it a few with a bites fork a day. well <laughs> with a, a few with bites a, a day though yeah exactly meal. exactly a, what? a cup a day a cup of sauerkraut a day a cup a day okay. yeah it's delicious you know and okay. and less calories mm -hmm. keep your blood sugar stable and remember, celiac disease is said to be gluten intolerance disease but there's many other things that you can react to it's not just gluten so any foods that cause digestive distress have to be eliminated, have to be avoided like the plague. 
And then vegetable juices, lots of vegetable juices and lots of fiber. Grind up flax seeds. Have you heard me talk about this, Brenda? Yes, one day no. I did, yes. Grind up flax seeds. They'll fill you up. You won't need to eat as much food, and they'll improve your estrogen naturally, and they'll help detoxify the hormones, the hormone replacement. So okay. we're, and they'll and they'll give um, provide a nice pres, nice healthy environment for for the uh, bacteria in the intestine. Okay. So I'd be going fi- I'd be going ketogenic diet, fiber. Make sure you're, you're continuing on the longevity products. Maybe throw in the women's FX, and then also uh, I'd be adding at 50 milligrams a day of zinc, picolinate, which is very important for all hormones. Mm-hmm. I'd be adding in about 400 micrograms or so of the ultimate selenium, which can protect you from some of the untoward effects of of um, of estrogen and then i would be absolutely 100 percent if you're not already be using a progesterone cream okay. or a progesterone supplement okay yeah he Are gives you... me a 200 milligram capsule type okay pill. good good and then so he's on top i was wanting to ask you if you thought that was as good as progesterone cream or should i ask him to prescribe a progesterone you know you're going to have to see the advantage of the cream is it gets you get a nice sustained release uh, uh, uh delivery it kind of gradually goes into the system plus it goes right into the blood so your liver isn't going to be involved if you eat it if you swallow a pill then it has to get processed by the liver and then you get this big dose and then the dose drops rather than a nice gradual sustained release on the other hand you get a bigger dose with the with the capsule so you're going to have to see which one you which one works better personally i always try the cream first it's much gentler and much more benign that way uh it's kind of gradually enters into the blood rather than getting a big hit f- all at once but you're gonna have to see how you're gonna have to see uh, how you respond all right brenda i gotta go thanks so okay. much for your call appreciate it all right steve you get the last word what's going on man welcome to the bright side hi ben hey steve all right. Uh, I've been making a couple of notes here, and, well, your guests have been on there. I uh, believe the lady was just uh, talking about uh, uh, testosterone. Uh, was is that the uh, hormone pellets that they insert underneath yeah. the skin for, like, five yes. to six months? Yeah, yes. It, yeah, and the problem with them, I believe, is they're uh, detrimental because it stops and derails the body's natural um, production yes. and, and healthy levels. Yes, that's a good point. It, it's not, um, it just stops the entire production because, it, 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 you know, it, it, it uh, senses that it's there and, and that's right. uh, over, maybe it could be many times the uh, level that the people need. But that's anyway, the, that's, that's the big problem. Hey, Steve, we're out of time, buddy. Oh, we're just out of time. No. I know, I know. I'm sorry. You got to call in earlier, man. I did. I, I got to let you go. Call in Monday. Call in our next program Monday. I'm sorry, Steve. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening, friends. Uh, Check out my website, brightsideben.com, as well as pharmacistben.com. If you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products, of course, truthtreatments.com for our truth skin health products.